Hi, this is Herb Shiro with the Dr. X channel. Today we're going to talk about upgrading your Ender 5 with a new extruder that both does a better job with regular filament, uh, really uh, the best prints I've seen off my Ender 5, but also gives you the ability to print flexible filaments in a variety of shore hardnesses. And we'll explain what the shore hardness scale is and how it applies to filaments. So stay tuned and let's learn something together. Today, we're going to install a CME CNC EZR extruder onto our Ender 5. Um, this is a very, very interesting extruder. If you look at the picture in the corner, you'll see that the Bowden tube, in our case, it's a Capricorn tube, the Bowden tube comes all the way down to the end of the extruder right by the gear. That means that there's very little space for a filament being fed into the extruder to go off the plantation, so to speak, out of the correct path. One of my minor complaints about my Ender 5 historically has been that it's just difficult to load filament. The location of the filament um, extruder on the Ender 5 is in the back corner. It's hard to get to when I have it in a normal desk location. And very often I had difficulty getting the filament from the extruder into the Bowden tube. With the easy extruder, that problem goes away. In addition, because of the tight clearances, I was, as you'll see, able to print any filament I threw at it. Now that doesn't mean that TPU is easy to print. You still have to fine tune your parameters in order to eliminate stringing to get it to print smoothly. And some prints are more suitable than others for TPU. In fact, this frog is probably a terrible alternative. If you look at this in a close up, there's some fairly fine uh, components here. There's lots of potential for stringing. So this was a very difficult print to print with TPU. So let's switch cameras here for a moment. Let's install the Easy Struder on our Ender 5, and then we will come back and we will look at the various prints we produced both before and after, and sharing conclusions about whether the CME CNC is a worthwhile upgrade to your Ender 5. Okay, let's get started changing the extruder on our Ender 5. You'll notice, as I mentioned, I had already upgraded my Bowden tube to a Capricorn um, high precision, high temperature tube. You'll also notice here that the coupler is different. I have replaced the Creality couplers already because I found they just weren't very good quality. They use plastic hooks to grab onto the tube instead of metal and they don't release smoothly. A well performing coupler will allow you to push down on the ring and then very easily pull up the tube and have it release. So we're going to take that out of the way. We're going to start by loosening the top screws. You have to be careful that this spring here does not jump out at you. Um, so let's find the right size screwdriver. I'll try to stay out of the camera area. A little too small. It's always the last one you try. So we're going to release this screw here. And now we'll pull that screw out. Put it aside. Let's release the second screw here. And be careful because there is this spring here that will want to push on this. Uh, but the plastic here is connected together, so that's holding it in place. And now we can release the third screw. Okay, the spring just fell off. And, ah, interesting, the stepper motor in this case is still held by this screw here, which I had forgotten about. So until we take that screw out, the stepper motor will stay in place. 
if we rotate the stepper motor now, we can get to the screws that hold the gear in place. Listen to the second one. And now we can take the existing gear off. We will not need this gear any longer. And if you compare it to the new gear we're going to use, you'll see that they are potentially slightly different sizes. Um, so that's going to change the uh, steps per millimeter that we need to set our extruder to. So we will have to recalibrate our extruder. Okay, you'll notice here that we've placed the new gear onto the stepper motor. We've made sure that we've set the grub screw and tightened it down. Um, in our case, there was a slight burr on the shaft of the stepper motor that was caused by the set screw from the other gear. I took a little bit of 600 grit sandpaper and sanded that burr down in order to get it to fit. Now we're going to place the stepper motor uh, behind the bracket and we're going to set the new extruder on top. We're going to be using the bottom four screws on the new extruder. You'll notice that I have a piece of filament that I've already loaded through the extruder. That's so that I can align the gear properly and by pulling up and down on the filament, I can see that the gear is properly aligned uh, with the uh, filament going through the extruder. I'm going to place the top right screw in first. And these use traditional Phillips screw heads, not hex screw heads. Um, and now that I have the proper screwdriver, uh, we're going to wiggle this around a bit until we can get this. Okay, the screw is biting going through the bracket into the stepper motor behind it. That's going to hold it in place. Now you'll notice I still have the cable tie holding, holding the extruder together. Uh, I'm going to leave that in place until I get a couple of the screws in. Because if I remove that, the spring that is going to press the gear against the idler uh, will potentially come out. Okay, we have the second screw in now. It is still loose and uh, you'll notice that spring is still in place. Uh, so I can now cut the cable tie um, so that I can get the third and the fourth screw in place. Okay, now that I've cut the cable tie, I can put in the remaining two screws. Okay, the next step is to insert the Bowden tube back into the extruder. Now, if you're using traditional tubing, this will go in very, very easily. If you're using Capricorn tubing, which is a little thicker on the outside dimension, it's quite difficult to get it in. Um, in the case of this extruder, I actually needed to loosen these two screws and slip the fitting out, put the tubing in, measure this distance, uh, and then put it back in place. It's probably worth the effort, though, because the closer you get this Bowden tube to where the gear is, the less distance the filament has to travel and the less likely it will be to cause any uh, difficulties with flexible filament. So I took the extra effort to get the Capricorn tube in because it does handle higher temperatures better, it's dimensionally more accurate, but it was uh, not easy to get in it. Okay, I've, uh, loaded, I've loaded some filamentum green flex fill filament on here. That's a semi-flexible filament. It is the filament I was using for my other test prints. I'm going to insert this into the bottom of the extruder. First, I want to point out that I have cut this on quite a severe angle. So I have a really nice point on the end. You press in this nice big green lever and it went right in without any difficulty. And you can see here that there's very, very little room between a narrow plastic channel 
that's basically the same size as the Capricorn tube and the Capricorn tube. So I'm going to now bring this printer up to temperature, uh, finish feeding the filament in, and begin a print. Okay, we're back and we've completed a bunch of prints. So let's begin by talking about flexible filament in general. Each flexible filament has a sure hardness index. I have some information on very sure hardness indexes here. As an example, an art gum eraser is a 30, a rubber band is a 35, a pencil eraser is a 55, and to look at some additional ones here, tires, car tires are 65s, soles on rubber shoes are generally 80, and a hard tire on a forklift would be 95. Now, most of the filaments that we print with are generally relatively hard. Um, as an example, a standard TPU, this is a SanSmart TPU, it's one of my favorite TPUs because it's very, very easy to print with, is about a 90 or a 95 shore hardness. Ninja Flex, which is considered like a wet noodle in terms of hardness, is actually an 80 or an 85 shore hardness. So the first thing I did is I took the Ender 5 and I attempted to do some prints without making any modifications at all. And you can see here what some of the results were. Um, the best I was able to get to by slowing it down quite a bit still was not fantastic. Um, I believe I probably could have continued to tune, tune this and gotten it to a place where it worked. This was under extruded quite severely, perhaps with a much higher temperature um, and a higher uh, flow rate, I could have gotten this to work. Because people clearly do print TPU on standard Ender printers and the setups of most of the Enders are about the same. I decided to change the extruder. So I put in place a CME CNC extruder. The initial results, as you can see here, were just okay. There was a lot of stringing here. Um, I had retraction completely off. I was printing at about 230 degrees centigrade um, on the standard bed with magic goo on the bed on the Ender 5. Um, and it did extrude properly, but the stringing was pretty dramatic. I found the optimal configuration was 20 millimeters per second as overall speed. Retraction left on, interestingly enough, because you can see this print is quite good uh, with very, very little stringing. I did not clean this up. Retraction on at five millimeters, 40 millimeters per second. Combing off a print temperature of 230 degrees Celsius with a heated bed set to 55 degrees. Now I did use Magigoo on the bed and I think that's very important. So this first test here is with filamentum green flex fill. Now this is a pretty stiff filament. Um, it doesn't really move a lot. I guess it's less brittle than PLA, um, but it's not sort of squishy. Next test was with SanSmart TPU. This is a filament I like a lot. I use it on a variety of printers. It prints very easily at the parameters I just said. And this is nice and squishy. It did string just slightly more than the filamentrum, but both of them are extruded perfectly. And then the final test, um, which this is really not the right model to use for this test. This is NinjaFlex. This is very, very soft. It did string a lot and it under extruded a bit. I believe I can tune it, but what was interesting, that $40 extruder is able to handle NinjaFlex with retraction. It did not jam once. This print isn't perfect, but it's very, very tunable. So what did I demonstrate? Well, by using the CME CNC extruder on an Ender 5 with the Capricorn tube, and a new coupler at the hot end, I was able to handle any filament I threw at it. Well, folks, 
I hope this was helpful to you. I hope you learned something. If you did, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe, hit the bell, uh, recommend this channel to other people that might benefit from it. Thanks so much. Have a great day and let's continue to learn things together.